Hello out there and welcome to your next mission video podcast. We have a great show for you today that focuses on the United States Army Network Enterprise Technology Command at Fort Huachuca, Arizona, also known as NETCOM. The NETCOM command team will tell us about the history of the organization and the challenges they are facing operating, managing, and securing the Army's portion of the Department of Defense Information Network. It's going to be a good one, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome to Your Next Mission video podcast, where we tell the stories of those who have served in the past and those who are serving today. From transition to financial wellness, VA benefits to mental health, we cover issues facing veterans, active military, and their families. Now here's your host, the 12th Sergeant Major of the Army and co-founder of the American Freedom Foundation, Jack L. Tilly. Hello out there, warriors, past and present, your families, and thank you for your service to our great country. Now, before we get started, I personally want to thank our presenting sponsors, Navy Federal Credit Union, whose members are the mission, and Purdue Global, where you can start your comeback with additional sponsorship from Blue Cross Blue Shield, FEP Dental, Blue Cross Blue Shield, FEP Vision, and USAA. Together, they make your next mission happen. They love our veterans and families, and I'm gonna say it every week, we love them too. As I said earlier, we have a great show today focused on the United States Army Network Enterprise Technology Command, also known as NETCOM. And I'm excited to introduce the NETCOM Command Team, Major General Christopher L. Eubank, Commanding General, and CSM Michael J. Runk, Command Sergeant Major. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having us, Sergeant Major. Well, I appreciate you guys coming on here. Before we before we do anything else, but each one of you tell the audience just a little bit about yourself. And, sir, we'll start with you. All right. Thanks, SMA. Yeah, so uh, I'm an Army brat. I grew up. Uh, my dad was a tanker. Uh, ah. Vietnam. Yeah, Vietnam vet. Um, oddly enough, I was born in Delaware because he was teaching ROTC at the University of Delaware um, after, after the war. Um, so I've been all over the world, uh, ended up in uh, Virginia Military Institute, uh, where I can't say I was the top ROTC scholar, uh, but here I sit. Um, I've enjoyed my time in the military. I started out as a tank platoon leader. I, I was uh, branch detailed, as we say in the Army. So did a couple years in the combat arms and then moved over to the Signal community and uh, have been living inside the Signal Regiment, the tactical level uh, inside divisions and the soft community up until I got promoted to one star when they made me the commandant of the signal school and then off to the, uh, the NETCOM enterprise with seven signal command. And now as the CG of, of NETCOM. So, um, absolutely enjoy the army, uh, love what I do. Um, you know, I came in the army in, in the nineties when, when uh, the job market wasn't the greatest and, and uh, I wouldn't trade anything I've done uh, for anything at this point. Um, absolutely love soldiers, love people, love the mission. Uh, and it's uh, what a great way of life. But that's, that's who I am in a nutshell. I'm married uh, for about 28 years now. I got one daughter who is a freshman at Furman University. Uh, and so, but yeah, absolutely love what I do. And thanks for having us on the show. Well, I've got to say a couple of things. One is your dad was a tanker in Vietnam. So was I, old guy here. And, uh, I'm, and, and I see you as a lieutenant in tanks, so I love being on top. The other thing is you've been married doing just 30 plus years, is that what you're, 20 plus years? 33 years now. 33 years. I've been married 52, so uh, I know who's in charge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, Absolutely. So, there you go. Sergeant Major, how about yourself? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, SMA, I've been in the Army now for 26 years, but I was born and raised uh, in a small town just outside of Madison, Wisconsin. You know, I, I didn't have a whole lot of travel when I was growing up. As we didn't really leave outside the state of Wisconsin. But, uh, you know, I joined the Army looking for opportunity, right? I wasn't ready, quite ready for college. I wanted some focus in my life. So I decided to join the Army in 1997. Um, started out in the 82nd Airborne Division at uh, Fort Liberty. Uh, I spent a couple years there, and then I, uh, I took the challenge, went up to the uh, 75th Ranger Regiment went through the um, assess assessment program, program uh, and I was stationed up at JBLM, 2nd Ranger Battalion. Um, looking, again, just looking for opportunity, looking for promotion, 
And then 9-11 kicked off, right? And all bets were off. Like everything changed. Uh, I remember running around Graham Airfield uh, when the towers were struck. And uh, from that moment forward, we all knew things were going to change. Uh, yeah, I, I spent uh, a few years being deployed out to Afghanistan in support of OEF. Uh, I decided to take a knee for a little while, went down to Tradoc uh, at 6RTB, uh, spent a few years there. Um, and then after taking a knee for a little bit, I uh, went back into the community uh, at Fort Liberty in a special mission unit, served there for about 10 years. I uh, eventually made Sergeant Major and uh, got CSL selected to serve at the first TSC, uh, moved that uh, to start command at Fort, Liberty, uh, Fort Knox. And then um, I was stationed at HRC for a while. I uh, got CSL se selected again for battalion, uh, served at the brigade level here at Fort Huachuca in Information S uh, Systems Engineering Command, uh, and then got uh, selected to serve at the two-star level here at NECOM. Um, again, I, I wouldn't trade that that uh, experience for anything in the world. Again, uh, 26 years have gone by pretty quick. It was only supposed to be four years, right? I joined the <laughs> Army, right? I was going to get some college uh, experience on my belt, maybe some uh, practical experience with the Army, and then, uh, then then get out of the Army in four years. But uh, here I am 26 later. It got extended, you know? So, um, again, I'm married. Uh, my wife is a SAR major. She retired at 28 years. Uh, we have three children, two of which live in Texas, uh, and my youngest is here with us at uh, Fort Worth, Duke, Arizona. SMA, that's me in a nutshell. Look here, you you got a pretty good paycheck. Your your wife retired as sergeant major. You're going to retire, so you're you're living the life right there. You know, it's really funny when you talk about that. I, I was the same way. I wanted to, you know, stay in two or three years, get out of the service, but uh, I actually did get out uh, when I got to be a, a staff sergeant. Stayed out two years, but I missed it. Uh, because it really, like I said, it changed me a lot, and uh, and then I went back in. But and, and also, you have a, re a really a rounded career with all the assignment that you've had. Sort of opens your eyes to a lot of different things that uh, go in the military. So you, you, I'm certainly sure you guys are a good command team. That's for sure, sir. Can, sir uh, Netcom has a long uh, known communication is the communication arm of the uh, army with global responsibility and in constant competition with crisis and conflict. When people think about NETCOM, uh, what, what's the first thing they should know? Wow, SMA, you know, here's what I tell people. This is not your parents' NETCOM, right? And, and I, I don't mean anything negative about that, but um, the world, the cyberspace domain, the world and technology have changed so fast, so rapidly um, over the last couple of years that um, NETCOM, as, as well as the army had to change, right? So um, the netcom of old was single channel radios. We did some some information systems engineering. It was the precursor to ISEC or Information Systems Engineering Command that Command Sergeant Major Runk was the brigade Command Sergeant Major of. Um, but we're so much more than that now, right? So we we are responsible for the army unified network based on zero trust principles. Um, and, and we deliver that on behalf of the army, uh, every day. And so, um, what I would tell people to walk away with is we, we do it for the army. So whether it's a phone, a VTC, a chat application, uh, you know, your mobile device, we, we do that on behalf of the army every day. And we do it as you stated in competition, crisis and conflict. So, there is no rest in the cyberspace domain. Uh, we we talk adversaries and threat every day in this headquarters, um, and our number one job is to um, enable decision dominance for the warfighters. So get them to the data they need to make decisions. Uh, and I think uh, we are bringing the Army network into the 21st century every day. You know, one of the problems I always have when I was on active duty is that is that we talk about changes in tech technology and changes to, and, and I, first of all, I know technology changes so fast but it seems to me we used to talk about it too long and all of a sudden it's it's outdated and we buy it are, are we a little bit better now are we getting staying current with all that stuff oh absolutely sma i think i i think what's driving us there is um our ability to deliver data um on any device today right so um, it's not about just, hey, here's the next greatest uh, laptop or device, um, and it takes us, you know, six months to acquire that device. We can now deliver that to your personal device. Yeah. And so um, 
COVID put us in a really interesting place. Uh, it forced the Army to kind of change the way we do business, which forced Netcom to change the way we do business. And because of that, I, I think our, uh, our process is a lot faster than it used to be when it comes to keeping up with technology. Yeah, I, it's probably a lot faster than when I was in the Army. That's from doggone sure. Hey, hey Sergeant Major, you want to add anything to what your boss just said? Anything you want to add anything to him, Sergeant Major? Yeah, that's me. I appreciate it. Wow. Uh, everything that the boss described, right? Well, first thing that comes to my mind is opportunity, right? So far, uh, people is my my biggest focus, right? So uh, with the driving te technology into the 21st century, all the things that we described here, right? There's plenty of opp opportunity here for uh, promotion, uh, travel, uh, education, and a real world experience as you start to think about the job opportunities that Netcom has to, uh, has, has to offer. You know, we're not just talking about, uh, you know, enlisted service members or officers either, right? We're, we're talking about the Department of the Army civilians. Our civilian workforce is a huge par portion of, uh, of NECOM, uh, of its 16,000 uh, soldiers, officers, and um, civilians around the world. And so the opportunities for employment here uh, and then to build your upon your resume uh, are just phenomenal. So I encourage folks to, to at least consider. Yeah, I, one of the other things as you're talking, I'm thinking about because uh, soldiers nowadays are so in tune with their iPhones and, and social media and all that stuff. Sergeant Major, does that, does that create any problems for you? <laughs> no, in fact, we actually encourage it, right? We have, oh, is that uh, right? Tools. We, have we have tools we can put on your uh, device. We call it BYOD, bring your own device, right? So we have uh, applications and things that we can put on your personal device. Uh, voluntary, by the way, it's all voluntary. Well, you have to volunteer for these, these uh, programs, but you can uh, work on your personal device, uh, you know, from a separate partition of your of your uh, your phone or your device, right? So, no, I mean, we actually encourage it, right? That's the that's the way ahead. In fact, uh, you know, I know the Army's moving along with uh, data literacy and, and uh, programs like that to get us more focused on uh, how we operate in the cyber domain uh, and ask smart questions. Right. So, no, I absolutely encourage uh, technology and the use of. Yeah, that's good. Hey, so I'm ready to get another question. How does Netcom lead global operations for the Army portion, uh, the DOD information network, while ensuring freedom of action in cyberspace? Yeah, SMA. So the, the way we do it, right, there's uh, eight brigades, uh, six regional cyber centers, uh, 183 network enterprise centers, uh, five regional hub nodes or I'm sorry, RHNs. And then uh, we do that across 288 post camps and stations, uh, 22 countries around the world, right? So it's not just here uh, in Arizona, it's, glo it's a global mission. Uh, and so we do that through three lines of effort, right? Uh, I described people being one of our lines of effort, uh, obviously your readiness and then uh, continuous improvement on, on all of our projects as we move uh, the unified network towards uh, zero trust principles. Mm -hmm. You know, sir, being the Army's single information technology service provider for all network communication, is it, you know, I got to say that's a huge undertaking. How many people does it take to get the job done? Now, I know Sergeant Major gave me a number here a minute ago. Hopefully it's uh, probably about the same kind of number, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, SMA, it's, uh, so depending on hiring frequency, we ebb and flow between 15 and 16,000 globally. Uh, and Sergeant Major pointed out that's, uh, soldiers, you know, officer enlisted, warrant officers, uh, and DA civilians, and then we have uh, we have contractor teammates as well. So this is this is a team effort. Uh, you know, it takes it takes a village, as we like to say, yeah. and so it's a uh, it's the Army team, and the Army team includes our our industry partners. We have very good relationships with with uh, a ton of industry partners, and it takes all of us rowing in the same direction. I mean. To the point where you know sergeant major laid out kind of how we're organized and then what i would tell you that organization is flowing data into what we call the global cyber center here and we feed the information warfare operations center at our army cyber command at uh, fort eisenhower and and everybody's involved in that so it's our industry partners it's our um and it's our workforce uh as well so it again takes a village to to get it done, and and we we sync um, every day of the week, and then we do two major operational updates um, twice a week in order to make sure uh, we're talking threat as well as status of the network uh, each and every day.
Yeah. You, you know, I, if something's running, if it's running good, you're in good place. But if it's running bad, I'm sure they put the heat on you. That's for dog you. How do you, how do you, yeah. How do you coordinate all the efforts? You know, I, I, was, I was, as you're talking, I'm thinking about all the people when I was a brigade, I was a brigade division and, and then started major in the army. And it's so hard to coordinate stuff that you're doing with, with all those people. So uh, how do you coordinate your efforts with, you know, 16,000 people, soldiers, civilian contractors all around the world, world? How do you coordinate all the stuff that you got to do with those guys? Yes. Uh, so SMA, I rely on our down trace organizations, right? So eight brigades, you know, you give them some, you know, mission commands, some guidance and direction, uh, and you, you enable them to run with it. So those, uh, those eight brigades are situated worldwide. So, um, you know, from Southwest Asia all the way to Korea. Um, and so we re I rely on those brigade commanders, command teams, SAR majors to uh, ensure that the workforce is understanding uh, where we're headed. Uh, we do several town halls a year. Uh, we talk to the workforce globally. So it's not just Fort Huachuca. You join, I mean, you join via teams and, and, uh, and uh, so we get the message out that way. And then between Sergeant Major and myself, I have a, I have a civilian deputy. Uh, he, he uh, talks to the senior civilians across the organization. Sergeant Major talks to the Sergeant Majors. I'm talking to commanders. And then we sync, the three of us sync, make sure the message is straight here, share what we're hearing, and then we go back after it. So it's kind of it's kind of repetitive. But uh, the, this team is phenomenal. So, you know, it's, uh, you know, 15,000 strong, um, third largest network in the world. And, uh, and so um, I'm absolutely blessed to be the guy sitting in the chair uh, that's the commanding general of a team that just gets after it every day. Yeah, I would imagine. I, I know every position I ever worked in in the military that I traveled all the time. I was always on the road finding out what's going on because, you you know, you can have a Zoom call or a Teams meeting or talk to them on the phone. But the answer is, I mean, the answer really is you have to get down and see what's going on for yourself. And that's uh, I think that's uh, the, that's really the key to leadership, I believe. Anyway, Sergeant Major, you want to add anything to what the, your boss just said there? Sure. Yeah, SMA, you know, I think the key to this whole uh, conversation is shared understanding. Like the boss described, uh, there's different uh, communication cha channels that we use. The NCO Sport channel is the one I use. Uh, but I think terms of reference is, is, the, is, the, is the, the secret sauce, right? So we start talking about doctrine. You know, I think uh, everyone in sync with the Army Unified Network Plan, the Digital Tent Transformation Strategy, the Army Cloud Plan, all these doctrinal um, platforms that we have uh, sources, we can all reference the similar material as we uh, kick off conversations uh, around the world. Yeah. I think the other thing for you, you probably go to a lot of different commands within the Army and explain to what your capabilities are. I see you nodding your head, sir, but I mean, because one of the things, I mean, I'm, I'm an old tanker. I don't, you know, if the radio works, I'm good at the time, but now the systems are you know, so much different that you have to go out and continue to market and tell your story about what you bring to the fight and what you have available. Do you do a lot of that, Sergeant Major? Yeah. So, I mean, we talk to our, our mission partners, whether it's, uh, you know, a division, a core, uh, you know, or a direct uh, reporting unit to the Army. Uh, talk to all of our mission partners. Talk to our installation community relationships here uh, as well at Fort Huachuca, um, you know, and as, as well as our, our Don Trace organizations to make sure that we're all synced. We're all saying the same strategic messaging uh, and we're getting after the same capability. Um, you know, I think I, w one thing I, I, you know, I thought about here in this conversation, uh, you know, making sure that we're all synced and new emerging technology. One thing the boss likes to talk about is eating our own dog food, right? And so, you know, as we, <laughs> as new uh, emerging technology, you know, unveils itself, uh, we'd like to test the, the waters here at the Metcom headquarters on, on some of the capabilities that we're, we're, uh, we're unveiling. Uh, and then, how we message that to the rest of the army, right? Um, I think we're doing a pretty good job here. Um, you know, although you know we are moving pretty fast, uh, it does make some folks uncomfortable. But that's just the way the uh, the nature of the beast when it comes to technology. Yeah. Hey, sir, I got one more question for before we take a quick break. The the uh, joint commands is a, is different. You know, when I was in the army, I was a CENTCOM sergeant major, and, and dealing with those joint commands. I mean, that does that that brings its challenges, especially with other services. Do you do you run into issues, or, or are they user friendly, or how's that working out for you? Yes. Yeah, so, I, I I'll tackle that question two ways, actually. So I'll tackle from a service perspective. So 
great relationships amongst the services. I think all of us are watching each other, right? So the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, Marines, even the Coast Guard. We just went through um, a cyber readiness inspection out here, and the Coast Guard actually sent some folks out to uh, to observe. And so we're all yeah. learning from each other every day. So I think a great uh, partnership and relationship amongst the services. Uh, in the joint force, I would say the exact same thing. Uh, the relationship's good. I think what I, I think um, we do our best to ensure they understand what we're doing for the Army, uh, and then where they can adopt that, maybe adopt that, um, especially in the COCOMs, the combat commands. Uh, they uh, they are on um, joint services, not not service services. So I'm not delivering. Um, IT services to the uh, combatant commands that the Army is the uh, support agency for. They are they're either doing it themselves or getting it from maybe DISA. And so what we try and do is share our lessons learned as technology changes so that um, they understand what we're doing. And then really as of late, since, since the, co the pandemic, we've done a better job of synchronizing our efforts across the services and the joint force to make sure that uh, all the all the IT, all the technology we're delivering talks to each other. Yeah. Uh, so that's been probably the biggest challenge. And, and I, I think we're, we're in a really good place now. When we first started this, um, I think we were a little bit disjointed. But now I think we're in a really good place uh, amongst the services and the joint force. I'm glad you said that because that's the next question I was going to ask you. Because uh, I always think I always think about deployments I had where we had you know other services there on the ground with me, and I and I have you know one set of communications that I may not be able to communicate with them. Also, aircraft coming in, uh, ships, and I mean there's a lot of stuff. It's it's no easy task, and it's so important that we do talk to each other, that we communicate because we're in this fight together. We're not uh, you know I want to say the army's the biggest, I know that, but but we're not in this fight by ourselves. We need all those guys helping us out. Yes, sir. Absolutely, SMA. Absolutely. Yeah. One of one of Netcom's main priorities is helping modernize how the Army communicates, and I'd I'd like to talk about that right after we take a quick break. So don't you guys go anywhere. We'll be right back. This is your next mission video podcast with me, your host Jack L. Tilly, 12th Sergeant Major in the Army. And if you're enjoying this discussion, and I know that you are, please like us. Click on that subscribe button below. Also click on the bell next to the subscribe button to receive notifications of all of our upcoming video podcast releases. I'll be right back after this word from our presenting sponsors. You're watching Your Next Mission video podcast, proudly presented by Navy Federal Credit Union, the most trusted credit union owned by members of the military community, serving all branches of the armed forces and their families. Their members are the mission. Learn more at NavyFederal.org. And Purdue Global. You're ready for a comeback, and with Purdue Global, you can do more than take classes. You can take charge of your story, of your career, of your life. Earn a degree you can be proud of and get an education employer's respect. Start your comeback at purdueglobal.edu. Now back to your host, the 12th Sergeant Major of the Army, Jack L. Tilly. Welcome back. We're talking with Major General Christopher L. Eubank, Commanding General, and CSM Michael J. Rung, Command Sergeant Major of the U.S. Army Network Enterprise Technology Command, NETCOM. Sir, what is NETCOM's current priority when it comes to helping modernize the Army's communications? Yeah, so SMA, I think the number one priority right now is, is uh, delivering the Army unified network based on zero trust principles. And so we have about 22, you heard Sergeant Major talk about our three lines of effort, people, readiness, continuous improvement. We have about 22 continuous improvement tasks, you know, given to us by either Army Cyber Command or the Department of the Army G6 uh, to, to deliver the Army Unified Network based on zero trust principles. And our goal, so we set those tasks in motion, those 22 projects, uh, and the goal is 2027, we will have delivered an Army Unified Network based on these zero trust principles. Couple major high priority 
um, projects inside those 22 are, um, I think the biggest thing I could mention would be Army Unified Directory Services. Mm -hmm. And so that's a really fancy acronym or, or a couple words for, for the first time uh, in the Army's history, you're going to be able to pick your computer up on your desk and go anywhere in the world, plug it in and access your information, right? So w for years, the way we operated is you have an account for one portion of the network, you change or PCS to another post camper station, you got to get another account. And so what we're doing is we're setting the globe so that no matter where you're at, um, you can log in, get to your desktop, get the information you need to make decisions. Uh, so that's, that's probably one of our bigger lifts. The, the next bigger thing, next big thing we're doing is um, for the first time ever, we're integrating the security incident event management uh, system across all networks in the Army. So we'll be able to see at the enterprise level the endpoints inside of a battalion formation at the tactical edge. And so what we do, that allows us at the enterprise level to provide top cover um, operation maintain security to the tactical edge and help them secure their networks better as they move forward into the fight. So those are the two big ones. There, like I said, 22 of them. We would be here a long time if we walked through all 22. <laughs> those, those two are probably the biggest lifts right now as we, as we uh, look to deliver this unified network uh, for the Army by 2027. You know, a lot of people don't realize how many bosses that how many people you work with. You know, how many? I'm just this is a crazy. How many bosses do you have? I know you got Tridoc, of course, and who else do you have to sort of work really closely with? So, my I like to tell people I have three kind of um, formal bosses, is what I'll say. So my my direct boss is Lieutenant General Maria Barrett at Army Cyber Command. She we are we are a subordinate organization to Army Cyber Command. Um, and so she is, she is boss number one, but I, I work, um, for, and on behalf of the, the army G6, Lieutenant General John Morrison and the CIO, Mr. Leo Garcia every day. So whether it's policy, it's driving on projects, it's securing the network. Those are the three seniors, um, inside the cyberspace domain that I answer to. Now, having said that, there are a lot of mission partners out there that I answer to every day. So there's a TRADOC commander, the 18th Airborne Corps commander, a, a division commander. Um, we answer to them because, I mean, those are the people we're providing services to every day. But that's kind of that's kind of the boss job jar. Yeah, no, I, I knew you had more than one. That's for sure. Sergeant Major, you, you want to add anything to that? No, yes, man, I appreciate it. Yeah, I just want to bring up one thing. And I, I tell you, I think I adapted this along the way uh, pre in my previous assignments. So it's a kind of a soft truth with what to say, but people are more important than hardware, right? So as we talk about the 22 major uh, technology projects that we have going on here at NECOM, and then we talk about the processes uh, that, that we are rolling out uh, in cyber operations, it's important to talk about the people, right? So when we talk about upskilling, reskilling, uh, the workforce, getting them certified, get them, get, get them educated, get them the right real world experience, and then talent manage them into positions to set them up for success. Uh, so we just got to communicate that change, communicate the change and how IT is going to change um, how NECOM functions moving forward, and then make sure that the workforce is prepared for those changes uh, through all the reasons I just described, right? All the ways, the education, the upskill and reskill the upforce. Uh, workforce. Yeah. Hey, sir, Sergeant Major Erdy, you, you both have talked in a lot here about NetCop operates through uh, three lines of effort, people, readiness, and continuous improvement. Would you tell me about the audience that, uh, tell me about that audience that you're, that you're working with, that, uh, that audience I just talked to you about right there? Go ahead. Oh, what, the three lines? Uh, SMA, yeah. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, the, the, uh, the question is, is, uh, let me go back and read it to you again here real quick. Uh, Earlier you said that NETCOM operates through three lines of effort, people, readiness, and the continuous improvement. Uh, would you talk just a little bit more about that? Right, right. So you know, I'll tell you, um, let me talk about how, how people really enables continuous improvement uh, in readiness, right? Uh, I like to say that uh, climate and culture can eat strategy for breakfast, right? So if you don't take care of the workforce, 
uh, your continuous improvement and readiness are going to be um, not to the level that you want it. So, right. So that's that's where my perspective is. You got to take care of the people, got to get them uh, reskill, upskilled, got to get them prepared for the changes that will come through continuous improvement uh, so that we can build upon uh, readiness. Okay. Yeah, the thing I would the thing I would add SMA. So uh, coming into the seat, uh, my goal was to align what we were doing with um, with my boss, the R Cyber Commander, and then honestly the Chief of Staff of the Army. So it was, hey, where where is the Army focused? And so it was pretty easy for us to say, hey, so people um, readiness. I mean, if you talk to uh, Forcecom, they're going to talk to you all day about readiness. And so for us, it was, hey, so it's really operations, but we have to, the network's got to be ready any given day for the warfighter. And so th that's readiness to us. It's day to day operation, operations, maintenance, and security of the network. And then finally, you know, we used to talk about modernization. Uh, and what we really, what we really wanted to do is help people understand that we don't do modernization. Uh, you know, ASALT does modernization, PEOs do modernization. We take what they deliver and improve it every day. And so that's continuous improvement. And so that's how the LOEs were kind of born. Uh, we had a fourth at one time called reform. And what we realized pretty quick was we were doing reform in all of them anyway. So we were trying to reform how we did people, how we hired, did talent management. We were for reforming our operations approach every day. And then we were trying to reform continuous improvement every day. So we kind of scrapped the fourth one, stuffed it into the other three, and, and we talk about reform in all three LOEs. But that's kind of my my additive to what Sergeant Major had to say. Well, the other the other thing, the other thing I was thinking about as you're talking, you got people scattered out all, all over, and it's sort of hard to see what those issues are sometimes. Again, uh, through social media, through Zoom calls, and through a lot of traveling, you're going to get out and, and see exactly what people are doing. And, and I would imagine uh, it's sometimes you probably don't, you don't see all of them in a year, I would think. I mean, because there's too many places that you have to visit. Uh, so that's, that's a really challenge. It's more challenging in, uh, in your kind of operation than, than me as a division sergeant major. I had 18,000 people, but they was all within, you know, probably 150 miles and I could go out and touch them all a little bit easier. So it was a lot easier for me. We have a lot more to talk about, but first, it's uh, time for us to take another commercial break. So stay right there. We'll be right back. This is your next mission video podcast. Here's a word from two more of the organizations who make this show possible. You're watching your next mission video podcast brought to you in part by Blue Cross Blue Shield FEP Dental Blue Cross Blue Shield FEP Vision. Part of transitioning out is that dental and vision insurance breaks off from your medical insurance. Vision and dental is very important to be able to enjoy your retirement. Blue Cross Blue Shield makes the transition so much easier. And USAA. A promise is a trust not to be broken. Whether spoken with an oath or sealed with a pinky. And after 100 years, we're still taking care of the military community and their families. That's our mission, always. Now back to your host, the 12th Sergeant Major of the Army, Jack L. Tilly. Welcome back. We're blessed to be here today with the NETCON Command Team, Major General Christopher L. Eubank, Commanding General, and CSM Michael J. Runk, Command Sergeant Major. I want of our viewers to reach out to me directly. Tell us about your transition. Tell us what topics you like to cover. I always say that it's, it's not my show, it's our show. You can call or text me at 844-424-1134 and I'll actually reach back out to you. Or send me an email at smatilly at yournextmission.org. Sir, Sergeant Major, we're, you know, unfortunately now, we're heading into our final segment with you and I hope you enjoyed it just as much as I have. I just have a, a couple more questions. Sergeant Major, we talked a lot about people, but recruiting must be a, a major line of effort in NAFCOM. How do you get just the right people, and, and especially since you're spread out all over in the right place, when you have such a wide range of tasks and it, it takes to manage and communicate these systems, you know, through the Army? 
Yeah, Esme, I tell you, um, the Army has certainly changed since uh, since I was growing up, right? The way the Army talent manages uh, soldiers and officers. Um, you know, ask them and AIM cycles have uh, continually, uh, it's a game changer. So what we do here in NETCOM, uh, we can communicate consistently with HRC, uh, specifically um, I, uh, with Signal Branch. Uh, we get ahead of the enlisted manning cycles, uh, and we talk to all the, the movers before they get into the, the cycle of their, their moving uh, timeline. And we educate them a little bit about uh, NECOM. And when I say about NECOM, again, it's eight brigades across uh, 22 different countries on the, around the world. So there's certainly opportunity there, uh, whether you're looking for um, culture around the world as, you know, it's really based on location, right? Uh, what's going to make the family happy? What's going to make the soldier happy? Uh, and then also educational opportunities, um, key developmental assignment opportunities for, for uh, enlisted folks and as well as officers. Um, you know, and that really drives the conversation. Uh, so we got to get ahead of it, right? It's a, it's a recruiting is a, a huge portion of our people effort. Uh, and again, it's communicating with HRC uh, and the soldiers as they uh, get ready to um, go into their moving cycles, whether you're talking about ASCOM or AIMS. But I'll tell you, it doesn't stop there, right? We're all, we have, a, like I said before, we have a large civilian work, workforce. So, you know, we, uh, we have a lot of civilian recruiting efforts uh, we've changed the way we hire through the um, cyber uh, exempted service, right? Uh, we've we moved from GS employment to GG employment. Uh, there's a lot of different authorities that come with that with direct hiring, um, as well as uh, incentives for the workforce. Uh, and so uh, when we go out to colleges, we have conversations over social media, uh, we, we drive that civilian recruiting effort um, because like I said before, it is such a large portion uh, of our workforce here and it's so critical. Um, so that's really uh, our recruiting efforts uh, in a nutshell, SMA. And one, one of the things that uh, probably, uh, it, it bothered me while I was on active duty and it still bothers me today, it just nobody knows much about the military. And I think we have a tendency to talk to ourselves a lot. And it's good for you to say, I go out to colleges and stuff and talk to people. But but are you doing anything to, you know, reach out to middle America? It's, it's really not your responsibility. It's big army and probably the major commander, really a uh, trade force com in the United States Army to uh, reach out. But it seems to me we still have a disconnect with middle America as far as what we're currently doing. And I think uh, we need to get as many voices out there telling their stories uh, about, uh, you know, what's going on. In fact, uh, I talked to a lot of veterans communities and tell them, hey, look, guys, we all served. Get out there and tell your story about, you know, what you liked about the military, not about what you upset about something, because everybody gets upset about certain things, but tell us how you change your life. So I think that's really important. I wish we'd, I wish we'd do a little bit more about that. Sir, you want to add anything to that about recruiting? No, I think that's great, uh, SMA. So I would tell you, I'll just build off of what you just ended with, right? And so, we spend a lot of time locally in the community here uh, in Sierra Vista and, our, and the surrounding area, Tucson, talking not just to the community, but the high schools, you know, the colleges. Uh, and it's 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 two pitches, right? It's, hey, you can join the military. And, and for me, I'm with you, Sergeant Sar Major, um, join the Army, but honestly, join any of them. Yeah. Right? You know, I, I just want you to serve. And then for the civilians, hey, I want you to serve. So we have opportunities for you. But I think past that, um, I think we're getting better at just broader outreach. We had a group of um, uh, community leaders from across the United States uh, here in the headquarters about three weeks ago as part of a, a, defense, a Department of Defense program and just spent about two hours with them just talking about netcom and what we do and answering their questions um and so we're trying to do more and more of that because i think it matters uh and and i think it matters not just to talk to the young ones but to talk to the parents and grandparents as well because uh, they they have influence right and so um you know i i think we're doing we're trying to do a better job at the other thing i would add on recruiting is um I think it's about recruiting, not just outside the army and pulling them in, uh, but it's recruiting inside the army. So as a, as a guy who grew up on the tactical side of the formation for a long time, I go back there, right? It's, Hey, when, anytime I'm at a, a post camper station, I was at Fort Carson about a month ago, 
I had a, a town hall with all the signal soldiers and no kidding said, hey, we're hiring. Uh, come talk to me. This is the jobs we have. Here's the opportunities, eight brigades globally. Um, and so spread the word. And then in inside my formation, it's, hey, go out to the tactical space and, be, and, and take the message from Netcom into the tactical space. I think we've got to do a better job across the board. But I, I think we are getting better at it. And that's that's the one thing I would add. Yeah, I, you know, I, I I love the fact when we first started, you talked about your dad being an old tanker in Vietnam, you being a tanker there for a while. I love tanks. I love, I mean, I stayed in tanks probably 10 or 12 years when I first joined the Army. So when I get out, a lot of times I'll talk about tanks and stuff. But but let me ask you another question. Why should uh, civilian or contractors join your team, Netcom? Why should they join Netcom? I mean, I, I know why to join tanks because I'm going to talk about it, but why should they join your team? Um because we're driving change for the army every day, SMA. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, the cyberspace domain doesn't go to sleep. Uh, it's active, you know, 24 seven, 365. I, again, I, I truly, and I'm biased. I truly believe right now Netcom is pushing the army as fast and as hard as it can to deliver uh, better, better IT services to enable war fighters and leaders to make decisions. And so when I talk to, you know, the, you know, industry partners or the community, I'm like, you, you want to be, you want to bring change to the army. You want to be value added. Netcom is doing that every day. And so I'm pretty, I, I don't know, my team might think I'm crazy, but I, I talk about it all the time. I mean, this is a phenomenal team and we have opportunity everywhere. To your point, you know, as a division command star major, you had a division at, let's say, Fort Cavazos. Um, I, I am sort of a division commander with um, one brigade and five battalions and a regional cyber center that are across Europe. I have, you know, I have opportunities in Korea, Hawaii, Japan, Alaska, uh, the continental United States, Southwest Asia, if you see fit to go to Southwest Asia. Uh, and so... Yeah. Why Netcom? Because we are driving change for the, Ar the, the Army every day, SMA. Well, I'll tell you what, the other thing I'll take, too, is you get a lot of frequent fire miles. That'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> Sergeant Major, you want to add anything to that? Yes, man, I appreciate it. It's, it's, um, look, the boss is talking about it. In fact, you know, it's funny you ask this question. Is I asked the boss when I first got here, why, why join Netcom? You know, why, why Netcom? Well, I'll tell you. The boss talks about all the time. It's, it's arguably the third largest network in the world. Right. Uh, and so when you, start, when you start talking about uh, in terms of size and complexity and capacity, what we're delivering here in NECOM uh, on behalf of the Army, it is phenomenal. And so as the world itself um, uh, changes into more of a technology based uh, industry, why not join NECOM? Right. The opportunities here are just uh, phenomenal. And I'll tell you, it doesn't stop with just signal soldiers and cyber soldiers or officers. Uh, or even the IT professionals and engineers in the civilian workforce. I, I'll tell you, it takes a team of teams, right? We have HR professionals, we have budget analysts, we have security analysts, we have all kinds of different enablers here in NECOM uh, that, uh, you know, we're out there uh, every day trying to recruit as well. And so, you know, I tell you, you know, I heard something once from NASA, right? They, they, asked, uh, they asked the janitor at NASA, what do you do uh, for NASA? He, he says, quite frankly, I put astronauts on the moon. So, you know, I, I can continue to beat that drum here in yeah. NECOM, right? Soldiers and enablers here in NECOM. What do you do for NECOM? We operate, secure, and maintain uh, the, the de Department of Defense Infor Information Network uh, continuously on, on behalf of the Army, right? That's what we do in NECOM. And I tell you, it, it, a lot of folks take pride in that. And uh, folks will stay here as civilian workforce 20, 30 years because they're committed to the, to the mission. It's a great uh, organization to be a part of. And people stay because of leadership. There you go. That's the mayor. That's it in a nutshell. Well, no, I can see your motivation about that. I'm, I'm just, I'm feeling your drive. In fact, I need to go re-enlist in the Army or do something. <laughs> hey, hey, this has been a great discussion. Any final thoughts, sir, Sergeant Major? Anything you want to share with the audience that maybe uh, something we missed? Or we'll start with you, sir. No, that's me. I, I want to say uh, thanks for the opportunity. I mean, every day for us is uh, trying to message, you know, what netcom is who we are what we do um and so this is just another opportunity for us so i appreciate you having us on again um i think 
I think NETCOM is driving change for the Army every day. And, you know, General George, Chief of Staff of the Army, said at AUSA in October, my number one modernization priority is the network. Yeah. And so we are, we are working that priority for him each and every day. And, again, thank you for having us today. All right. Sergeant Major, any, any final thoughts or anything? Yeah, so may I tell you, it's, uh, it is an exciting uh, mission here at NETCOM. I tell you, people matter. Relationships matter. It is a team of teams. You know, SMA, you and I were talking about earlier. I, I remember you in 2003 when I was a young soldier uh, traveling. You were traveling the world and you happened to come across, uh, you know, my formation out in Afghanistan. Uh, and the impact you made doing one arm push-ups, one arm push-ups, increased some morale out there and just, you know, lighten the attitude a little bit. We are all in this together, uh, right? Uh, relationships matter. And, uh, you know, it, it does take a team of teams. Uh, and I tell you, it's... Uh, the relationships that I've I've made throughout the Army, uh, and specifically here in NECOM, it will last a lifetime. And SMA, I appreciate the opportunity to to to, 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 to sell that message uh, today uh, through your podcast. So I appreciate it. Thank well, you. I, I think it, I think what you said is both of you said is is right on target. I think relationships matter, and I'll also tell you that that thirty second engagement with somebody it means a lot. Uh, you know, pat him on the back, give him a hug, whatever it is. But uh, thank you guys for what you're doing and what you continue to do because you're you're making a difference, not just for your command, but really for our country. So thank you, come, uh, thank you for coming on the show. We certainly appreciate it. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you to Major General Christopher L. Eubank and CFSM Michael J. Runt for being with us today. I'm Jack Tilly, 12th Sergeant Major of the Army. You've been watching your next mission video podcast, and thank you for joining us today. Please visit our website at yournextmission.org and leave me a review. I always say, I hope it's a good one, but it's a bad one. I guess I can take it. While you're there, you can visit our nonprofit and corporate partners who have jobs and services available that can assist you in your transition from the Army. We also just added a new job board in partnership with Recruit Military where you can search for a job that's just right fit for you. Check out this video on our website to learn how to fine tune your search. You can also create your own individual profile. Scan the QR code on the screen or the QR code on the website to create your own profile. All information collected is confidential and won't be shared with anyone. Please know we wanna help you any way we can. I'm gonna say that again. Please know we, all of us, the team, want to help you any way we can. You can follow me on my personal social media pages, Facebook, X, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Rumble. And if you liked what we're doing with your next mission, click on that uh, subscribe button below. Don't forget to click on the bell to receive notifications about all of our upcoming video podcasts. Don't forget, we want to hear from you. Leave me a message or send me a text at 844-424-1134 or send me an email at smatilly at yournextmission.org. Thanks again to Major General Eubanks and, and CSM Runk for being with us today. It was just great having them on the show. And, and it motivates me to, to talk to the Army anytime, because I'm an old soldier. I love talking to the Army. But it motivates me when I talk to people that are so motivated and enthusiastic about making our country better. Not just the Army, it's our country about training our young adults, our kids and our children to be better citizens in our country. And that's exactly what they're doing. They're working for you and me and all of us. They care about what we're doing. So the Army is a great place to grow. It's, it's a great place to grow up and be a, a better citizen, like I just said. I always like to tell people that the Army saved my life and it changed your life or changed my life. And so if you're thinking about joining the military and you want to go into you know, cybersecurity or NETCOM, do it. Do it. And I guarantee you, again, it'll make you and your family better citizens. Again, thanks for watching. Thanks to New Mind Studios and, of course, our sponsors. Navy Federal Credit Union, Purdue Global, Blue Cross Blue Shield, FEP Dental, Blue Cross Blue Shield, FEP Vision, and USAA. We appreciate all you do for our military. And as always, See you on the high ground. Hua! You've been listening to Your Next Mission, brought to you by the American Freedom Foundation. Learn more by visiting yournextmission.org.